people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Hello viewers, welcome to Newspeak South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Islamabad's peace intent under scanner as park back terrorists continue their anti-India operations. Joe Biden says US troop withdrawal from Afghanistan unlikely by May 1. And Khalistani operatives continue to smuggle heroin from Pakistan. On one hand, Pakistan pretends to extend hand of peace. And on the other hand, cross-border terrorism continues to form an essential part of the war-fighting strategy of Pakistan Army. Pakistan Army, which is the virtual ruler of the country, assists terrorists in planning attacks in the valley. Islamabad's peace intent is again under scanner of Indian security agencies after the encounter of four lashkar e terrorists in the region. We have a report. The Imam Sahib area of South Kashmir's Shopian recently witnessed a fierce exchange of gunfire. Four lashkar e terrorists were shot dead by security forces in the ensuing gunfight. The encounter broke out after the security forces were carrying out a search operation in the Manihal area following information about the presence of terrorists. The gun battle lasted for a couple of hours as the terrorists refused to surrender. The slain terrorists were identified as Raid Ahmad, Amir Mir, Rakib Malik and Aftab Wani. Raid had been active in South Kashmir since October last year, while the rest had picked up arms between November and February. This recent encounter of park back terrorists has completely exposed Islamabad's peace and dialogue offer. Yesterday evening, the Sofian police got a call that in the Manihal village, four terrorists were hidden. The army and the CRP police were put in the cordon. And we had to appeal to them. In fact, we had to appeal to a terrorist's wife. We had to appeal to them. We had to appeal to the rest of the family. But we had to appeal to them. And we had to fight from the inside and from the house. फिर इनकाउंटर शुरू हो गया इनकाउंटर में चार टेरिस्ट मारे गए चारों कैटेगराइज टेरिस्ट है लश्कर तवा से बिलोंग करता है हालांकि अपने आप को सो कॉल्ड है लश्कर मुस्तफा बोलता है पाकिस्तान आर्मी चीफ रिसेंटली प्रपोज्ड दैट इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान शुड बेरी देयर टू ब्यूलन पास्ट एंड मूव फॉरवर्ड बट इंडिया नोज दिस गेम टू वेल बाय नाउ दिस इज नॉट द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट पाकिस्तान इज प्रपोजिंग अ पीस प्लान the more than 70 years of joint history is replete with instances of double speak and treachery by Pakistan. This is why security forces in Jammu and Kashmir are gearing up in advance to conduct the incident-free annual Amarnath pilgrimage beginning June this year. We have plan of our own. We have increased our own. We have shifted our camp. And as you all know, after the election, we will get additional force. और जहाँ जहाँ सिक्योरिटी का कमी है जिस इस एरिया में सिक्योरिटी की का कमी है उसको हम प्लग कर लेंगे और बहुत ही सक्सेसफुल सेफ इंसिडेंट फील्ड यात्रा करवाएंगे हम लोग कोई दिक्कत नहीं होगी फ्रस्ट्रेटेड पाकिस्तान कंटिन्यूज टू यूज इट्स प्रोक्सेज टू हार्म द फ्लरिशिंग ग्रास रूट डेमोक्रेसी एंड डिवेलपमेंट इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर ऑन वन हैंड पाकिस्तान पुशेज आर्म टेरिस्ट इन टू द वैली टू डिस्टर्ब पीस इन द रीजन एंड ऑन द अदर हैंड इट एम्फोसाइजेज that there will be no peace in South Asia unless Kashmir is resolved. Moreover, Pakistan's dramatic statements seeking peace with India appear to be part of a larger strategy on the part of Pakistani leadership to placate the international community. This has been an old ploy Islamabad has been adopting for years. Recently, on the occasion of Pakistan Day celebrations at the Pakistan High Commission, Pakistani diplomat Aftab Hassan Khan replayed resolve all issues through dialogue statement. He stated 
that both India and Pakistan should resolve issues including Jammu and Kashmir through dialogue. The new charity affair statement I think is a big joke. It's a joke for the countries who are hearing it and it's a joke by Pakistan itself. And I think it's a very poor joke because the first step that is there is stopping of terrorists coming into the neighboring countries who are trained by Pakistan. Pakistan ISI is the one who is running those training centers and ensuring infiltration into India, into Ch Sri Lanka, into Nepal and into other neighboring countries of SARC. Pakistan's baseless claim over Kashmir has been an unfulfilled dream. The Islamic Republic has failed in creating an anti-India rhetoric among the youth of Jammu and Kashmir. This is why Islamabad is attempting to rewrite the story of terrorism in the valley, but the vigilant security forces in India will never let it happen. The air of deep uncertainty that has for so long dominated Afghanistan does not seem to disappear soon. While the United States is looking to keep troops in Afghanistan past a May 1 deadline, Taliban stand firm on the February 2020 peace agreement asking the US to strictly adhere to the mutually agreed deadline. Meanwhile, Afghanistan is witnessing a constant surge in the violence with no clear end in sight for a war that has turned into a stalemate. Have a look. The United States began a war in Afghanistan with an aim to rid the country of Al-Qaeda's threat and topple the Taliban's regime weeks after the Al-Qaeda killed almost 3,000 people in the 9-11 terror attacks. Two decades later, Joe Biden now faces an anguishing choice over whether to withdraw the last U.S. troops from Afghanistan by May 1st. Biden now says meeting the May 1 deadline for troop withdrawal will be tough as per the deal made during the Donald Trump administration. But he also predicts U.S. forces will not stay in the country much longer. It's going to be hard to meet the May 1 deadline. Just in terms of tactical reasons, it's hard to get those troops out. So what we've been doing, what I've been doing, and what Secretary Blinken has been doing, has been we've been meeting with our allies, those other nations that have NATO allies who have troops in Afghanistan as well. And, uh, and if we leave, we're going to do so in a safe and orderly way. But it is not my intention to stay there for a long time. But the question is, how and in what circumstances do we meet that agreement that was made by President Trump to leave under a deal that looks like it's not being able to be worked out to begin with? How, how, how's that done? But we are not staying a long time. Biden's comments came after Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin made an unannounced visit to Afghanistan earlier this week and held talks with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani. The two sides condemned the increase in violence in the war-battered country and stressed that lasting peace is the main solution for the current situation in Afghanistan. You know, that process of reviewing uh, the conditions that have been met or not met uh, is uh, is ongoing and uh, as you've seen with our efforts in Doha and uh, so I you know I won't I don't care to comment on that I won't comment on that but what I will say is that it's obvious that the level of violence uh, remains pretty high uh, in the country we really like to see that violence come down uh, and uh, I think if it does come down it can begin to set the conditions for you know some some really fruitful uh, diplomatic work There has been a surge in violence, with the Taliban continuing to carry out attacks targeting government leaders, security forces and civilians. A recent UN report indicated 3,035 civilian deaths and 5,785 injuries during 2020, with the Taliban held responsible for almost 45% of casualties. 
Observers also say that the Taliban have not yet pledged to cut ties to Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups threatening as the February 2020 agreement called for. Meanwhile, the Taliban has warned there would be severe consequences if Washington did not stick to the agreed timetable, further raising pressure on the fragile peace process. We had 18 months of negotiation with the Americans and they agreed that they will withdraw in 14 months. And these, the time is now going to end at the end of April, in first of, uh, of May. And uh, they should go, because if they do not go at the end of April, that means they continue. After that, it will be a kind of a violation of the agreement. That violation would not be from our side, but it would be from their side. So in that case, if there is action, of course there will be reaction. The reality is, whether or not President Biden withdraws all U.S. forces by May 1 in accordance with the U.S.-Taliban agreement of February 2020, Afghanistan is likely to spiral into more violence. There are reports that Ghani has already rejected the U.S. administration's new peace plan that calls for an interim government and will soon be announcing a counter-proposal that calls for a democratic procedure with new elections in the next six months. But the Taliban immediately rejected Ghani's proposal, terming it as scandalous. Pakistan has always tried to revive the issue of Khalistan, a separatist movement that is long dead. Through various means and strategies, Islamabad tries to instigate Sikh youth in India and abroad with the objective of spoiling their future. Narco-terrorism is one such means. On various occasions, Indian security forces have successfully busted the narco-terror module of Pakistan. Recently, the National Investigative Agency filed a charge sheet against seven Khalistani operatives involved in park bag smuggling. In June 2019, two bikers at a bus stop in Amritsar threw a bag when stopped during regular checking. The cops recovered a bag and seized hand grenades and a mobile phone from it. Investigations later revealed that the two accused Jajbir Singh Samra and Varinder Singh Chahal were part of a narco-terror module involved in distributing the heroin smuggled from Pakistan. They were working on the directions of Pakistan-based terrorist Harmeet Singh alias PhD. Now in a major development, the National Investigation Agency has filed charges against seven alleged Khalistani operatives in this hand grenade seizure case. The sources of terror funding have always been things like smuggling, uh, like drugs, like black marketing and so on and so forth. So we need to remember that, you know, the uh, uh, possible, uh, and, and we have to be careful about this, the possible uh, re-emergence of terrorism in uh, Punjab, uh, spearheaded by these Khalistanis, uh, with this very dangerous development of grenades being uh, discovered is almost certainly funded by the drug money that you uh, 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 see floating around in Punjab because as you know Punjab has a huge drug problem. Uh, there's almost no doubt about it that this is also being funded by Pakistan. The Punjab has not experienced a surge in terror activities in the recent years. There is no doubt that from time to time, some Khalistani elements show their presence in the state. The nexus between Khalistani groups, ISI and smugglers are raising drug money to support militancy in Punjab while destroying the youth with drug addiction. Recent arrests point to Pakistan's game plan of reviving the Khalistan movement by using the local criminal network in India. Moreover, Indian security agencies have, in recent months, seen increased activity along the international border in Punjab with the delivery of drugs increasing. Notorious ISI and pro-Khalistani groups are using drones
to make such deliveries possible across the border. According to the report, Pakistan's bigger plans of narco-terrorism released by South Asia Democratic Forum, seizing of drugs by Indian security forces, signifies increasing actions by drug merchants in each quantitative and qualitative phrases. Moreover, it exhibits Pakistan's larger plans to hold out disruptive actions in India. We've seen this in Canada, we've seen this in the UK. There's significant intersectionality now between the Khalistan lobby and the ISI, uh, mainly through the Pakistani expatriate community. And what we've seen, of course, is the fact that uh, before what used to happen in the 80s and 90s was that the ISI used to pay Khalistanis to carry out acts of terror. Today, it's the other way around. Uh, uh, one part of this deal has been that uh, a corridor that's been given uh, almost as a quid pro quo uh, for funding uh, uh, Pakistani covert activities. When Pakistan could not succeed in its nefarious designs by sending terrorists and weapons, it hatched a conspiracy to smuggle drugs into India. However, Indian security forces are vigilant enough to bust such narco-terror modules formed by Pakistan and its agencies. Islamabad should understand that it cannot achieve its goal of forming a separate Khalistan, either through conventional war or through other conspiracies. The rapid advancement in digital technology has acted like a boon for the process of globalization. But for some, it has become a weapon for spreading the wings of terrorism. Terrorist groups like the Islamic State, Lashkar-e Taiba and the Taliban to name a few have been using the social media and their digital publications to influence youth and lure them towards jihad. Several reports and research papers have time and again highlighted the interlink between the cyberspace, Islamist radicalization and terror financing that is aimed at expanding the outreach of extremist ideologies among the gullible youth and collect funds for their malicious deeds. We have a report. From the expansion of extremist groups and their worldwide recruitment policies, it has become evident that the threat of terrorism is not restricted to its region of origin anymore. The mass use of the internet and social media has obscured the borders of extremism and has imposed an undeniable menace to global peace. Terrorist organizations are now invading cyberspace and turning it into a battleground. They no longer rely on military force such as weapons, armor and bombs only. Instead, they have become more and more savvy and their strategies and tactics have gained technological orientation. One should note that terrorist organizations like other organizations across the world, always use every means possible for exploiting the space for their own ends. In the case of terrorist organizations, cyberspace was a medium which they have been very active for the past decade or so. And today, with the social media and other media coming on board, this medium has been completely exploited by them for their own nefarious ends. The technology proficiency of terrorist organizations is on a swift rise. A report by the European Foundation for South Asian Studies, or FSAS, in June 2020 discussed that information sharing has assisted in the dissemination of extremist beliefs across the globe at a faster pace and has appeared as an important tool in the radicalization of individuals and their subsequent recruitment as terrorists. The report highlighted the fact that owing to the accessibility, availability, affordability and wide reach of social media forums, terrorist organizations have progressively taken advantage of these platforms to convey their agenda and achieve their goals. Terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, lashkar e taiba Islamic State and Taliban are at the forefront of using the internet for their recruitment and expansion purposes worldwide. Besides, recent years have revealed a scary, dangerous new era in which not only adults but teenagers are being recruited to plot and carry out terrorist attacks. Youths can be very easily influenced by new ideas and new ideologies. 
they do not have the experience and the exposure of what this actual impact of the new ideas and ideologies can be in the real world. Thus, terrorist groups and other extremist organizations try to influence the youth and wean them away from the mainstream path to the, towards their cause. Also, the youth can be very useful as the soldiers of a terrorism or terrorist organizations. The park backed terror groups like Lashkar e Taiba through its political arm Jamato Dawa and more precisely its cyber unit called JUD Cyber Team have also started using social media channels to attract young disenfranchised men. In a similar pattern to ISIS, the JUD Cyber Team has provided links to a computer game titled Age of Jihad, which promoted the organization's objectives. According to intelligence reports, fake videos of alleged atrocities committed by the security forces and building a false narrative are now often used by the ISI handlers from Pakistan to whip up emotions among the young recruits. It was found that out of 131 youth recruited in India's Jammu and Kashmir into terrorism in 2020, 102 belonged to an age group of 16 to 25 years and 29 were above 25 years. In January 2021, two terrorists arrested in Kashmir were provided training online using various links available on public platforms like YouTube and were receiving orders as well as religious teachings from Pakistan-based handler Burhan Hamza. Earlier, Amir Siraj, a final year graduation student from Khwaja Gilgut in Sopor, was also recruited online by Jaishe Mohammed. He was gunned down during an encounter between terrorists and security forces. Now that the Indian Army has got a very strong infiltration grid on the line of control and other security forces on the international border, it is very difficult for Pakistan to infiltrate terrorists from across. As also the recent uh, agreement on ceasefire violations has further reduced the possibility. However, Pakistan's ISI and other agencies are now going to use the cyber medium, online media, social media to influence the Kashmiri youth to join terrorism and carry out terrorist activities. For funding, they are also likely to use the new currency such as cryptocurrency which has been used by the ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Apart from radicalization, a wide range of terrorist groups including Hamas, lashkar e taiba Islamic State in Iraq and Syria and Al-Qaeda have also used the internet to raise and transfer funds needed to support their activities. They have relied on sophisticated cyber tools including the solicitation of cryptocurrency donations from around the world. This trend is only likely to increase as the scope and scale of the internet expands and with other related technological developments. However, not all terror groups have yet achieved significant and widespread breakthroughs with cryptocurrencies and other mediums of online funding. Hence, when terrorist groups do innovate with fundraising, efforts to counter the financing of terrorism must also change with the times. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savajay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.